Hey everybody, welcome to Heroes and Homebrew, I'm Tristan and today I'm going to talk about why my next campaign is going to be low fantasy, low magic, low fantasy, low monsters. So let's get to it. I'm not done, but I'm kind of done with the super high fantasy of things like D&D. Um, there's a place for it and it's still fun to play, but lately I've been getting into the idea that I want my next campaign, my, my next campaign world to be something that's low fantasy and gritty and there's a car horn going on in the background. Um, so that's why I kind of am going to go with very few races it's going to be humans dwarves or elves and even the dwarves and elves are going to be offshoots of the human race not complete races of their own uh magic is going to be dangerous to use it's going to be rare things like hundreds of different magic items for players to find are not going to exist. There might be some that are sort of special items to the world, but largely they won't be there. The typical fantasy monsters like orcs, goblins, kobolds, even dragons are not going to be there. It is going to be something in the lines of the pulp adventures of Conan and Robert E. Howard and things like that. That's kind of the world I'm going to. <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. Because I fell upon this. This is Low Fantasy Gaming, the Low Magic High Adventure Role Playing Game by Stephen J. Grodzitsky. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm probably not. However, I fell upon this on Drive-Thru RPG. Looked interesting. I picked it up. And let me say, when reading through it, it really got my mind like going. It's not 100% what I'm going to go for in my next campaign, but it's, it's there. It's an OSR game, which is another reason, like me falling into the OSR rabbit hole has kind of got me thinking about how I can take these very few race and class choices and bring them even smaller and make them even more sort of important and stand out in the world. So let's look at what what is low fantasy gaming. This is from the book itself. It's rules light, like a lot of OSR games. There's very few rules. A lot of the rule a lot of the rulings are going to be done at the table by the game master or through roleplay. There's fast and engaging combat. There's another thing that's pulled me away from D&D is the combat takes so long. I don't want to be sitting there doing the same fight for an hour and a half of a game that we're going to be playing for maybe two, three hours at, you know, at a shot. I want to be able to get in make the combat brutal and gritty and maybe not everyone's going to survive and get out and keep going with the game. Dangerous and gritty. Absolutely. 100%. This is what I'm looking for. A realistic world. Like, uh, I was saying like, like Conan, that's kind of the world I'm going for. Where Conan takes place in sort of the prehistory of earth. That's, what I'm going to go for with my campaign setting and I'm going to create my campaign setting on this channel from scratch. So maybe in a couple of days we'll have the first video for that. <clears throat> Dark and dangerous magic. Yes. The, I borrowed a bit of this magic system for my, my system that I'm going to use where Using magic could have dire consequences. 
Uh, there's not hundreds and hundreds of spells. There's not four different classes that use magic. Uh, the game I'm creating for this campaign world is going to be there's one magic using class. There are a few spells, and every time they cast a spell, it could kill them. Riches and glory, like a lot of OSR games, this is what we're going for. We're making, going to make money, and we're going to make a, a name for ourselves from through conquering dungeons and exploring the wilderness. Open world, absolutely. This is what like kind of another part of what drew me to the OSR games is the idea of doing things like hex crawls and creating a map that's virtually undiscovered and creating this world along with the game. And then finally, in the intro, we have what LFG is not. This book does not describe a new low magic fictional setting. I'm going to create that myself. It's a generic rule set for use with published low magic worlds or a world of your own creation. I'm going to make my own creation. I should note that there is a campaign setting to use with this game, and there is a, a bigger version of these rules for sale on drive through. If you're interested, you should go pick it up. It's very cool. So, core features of this game, some of which I borrowed to for my own game, which I will also show you guys one day. So five classes only. Barbarian, Bard, Fighter, Rogue, Magic User. For my game, I have Barbarian, Fighter, Criminal, and Mage. So basically the Rogue, Magic User, Fighter, Barbarian. I left Bard out. <clears throat> 12 level maximum. Yep, I kept it. I kept mine at 12 levels. Roll equal or under attribute with modifiers to resolve uncertain actions, making every attribute point matter. Uh, this is pretty typical in a lot of role-playing games. You'll have either your, usually now in modern ones, it's roll equal or above. Um, for mine, I did equal and above too, because I think it's going to be easier for people coming from more modern role-playing games to do that. There's two new attributes, willpower and perception, which replace wisdom. Uh, for mine, I just used willpower. Perception is either going to be finding out what people see through their role playing, the questions they ask about where they are, or it'll be uh, a role. Skills provide access to level based reroll pool. Uh, this I didn't I didn't put in mind. Uh, it's a cool idea, however. I, I didn't really think that it would fit with what I wanted to do. Uh, diminishing luck attribute that replaces saving throws and powers some martial exploits. Uh, for mine, I just left with a, I used a single saving throw uh, score for each class at each level. Minor major and rescue exploits. This is a very cool mechanic. However, again, I didn't use it and put it in mind. Dangerous combat. I my the combat I'm using, I'm using a bunch of different sources. Um is very gonna it, it's very gonna it's gonna be dangerous. Uh I added uh escalation during combat, so every round everyone gets a plus one to hit and damage. So every run, every round there are plus, pluses to hit go up. Uh, this uh, low fantasy gaming has uh, injuries and setbacks when uh, players get to zero hit points. That's something I didn't add into mine when I was writing it, but I think I might go back and add something like it because I kind of like the idea of there being sort of permanent effects uh, from combat, like losing an arm and whatnot. It's something that would be kind of cool to, to role-play and uh, add into the story. <clears throat> and players test to see if a downed adventurer is dead only after combat has ended. That's a cool idea. It's like a, it is, There is a mechanic to it. Um, 
I think it's kind of cool. It leaves a little bit of tension when you leave, get down to zero hit points, and you don't know if you're dead until your buddies come over and like roll your body over and see what's going on with you. However, uh, again, uh, it's not something I put into mine, but it maybe might be something I add in later as a host rule. Uh, party retreat and chase. <clears throat> Uh, five minute short rests. Uh, I don't. I didn't use that. Dark and dangerous magic. I used a mechanic that's kind of like that. Um, they went through a lot of work and to when the when the author created this game, the dark and dangerous magic table is huge. It's uh, I think you roll a d one hundred on it. It's very creative. I um, kind of borrowed this mechanic and I changed it a bit. Uh, my table is just a, a d20, however I might expand it. I was kind of running low on ideas for it. I didn't want to steal outright from another game. Rare magic, magical items with obvious and discrete properties that unlock as their owners level up. That's very cool. However, I wanted to bring my world even lower so that magic items are going to be extremely rare. And they'll probably be very powerful. So things like uh, magic potions probably won't be around. I haven't really decided on that yet. Um, like healing potions, I think it's going to be more of like take take your buddy to an apothecary and a healing potion will be like a mixture of stuff. It won't be magical. Online play support. You can get one of your character sheets for roll 20. That's cool. Rules as guidelines. It's a thing, something I've put into mine, because um, I did write up all my rules, and maybe eventually I will release it on drive through if people are interested in it. Um, I think that's another, that's another aspect of OSR, even though it's in things like 5e, a lot of places that say the rules are just guidelines, make the game you want to play. However, there's a lot of talk online in facebook groups and forums of like what does this rule mean and people trying to get the actual right rules down whereas i, I find that bogs down the game and it stresses me out as a gm i want to be able to be like there's no rule for this i'm making it up if it doesn't work we'll change it for next time i i can't stress how much it bothers me to constantly have to be looking up rules for every specific situation. Uh, when I wrote up the rules for what I'm going to use for my campaign world, there is very few. I think the entire player book that I created is maybe 40 pages, and most of that is character creation. Actually, most of it's spells. But <clears throat> So how to play this goes through this typical. And creating characters, very simple, follow attributes so i'm not going to bother you with that uh but that's what this this book is what tipped me off for sort of going to that low fantasy um ideal for my campaign world uh i strongly suggest you pick it up uh i think if i'm not mistaken i believe this was free this version of the uh the rules, they do have a, a larger book with more classes and uh, races and stuff. Which, if you like this, you should pick it up. <clears throat> now, really, it was things like this, The Art of Frank Franzetta, that seeing the low fantasy gaming book, um, getting into the OSR and the play styles of OSR and Putting all of these things together is what really got my mind thinking of like, I'm going to move away from the high fantasy superheroes of D and D and get into hacking, hacking together my own system that'll work in my own world. And it was sort of like all this became like an inspiration to me to do what I'm planning on doing or what I hope will work out. It might fail miserably, which would be pretty awesome as well. But you see, like, it's 
just a dude with a big axe hacking apart opponents. Stuff like that that I got into recently. I've been rereading all of the Robert E. Howard Conan stories, um, getting ideas for what that world is like to, you know, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to outright steal stuff from my world. Why not? That's what we all do as GMs. All good GMs, they just steal stuff from everything around they see around that inspires them and molds it and makes it their own. That's the way, that's what we do. So I've been going through that a lot and I'm just about ready to start to sit down and start making my world. Um, I'm going to start small. I'm going to create just a small area map. Uh, I have an idea for what my world's going to look like. It's going to be prehistory, like sort of like a the Hyborian age. It's going to be sort of a little magical and mysterious, but with things that we can recognize now, like barbarians and Vikings and pirates, and I've got like an idea in my head for like a a desert that has sort of these marketplaces that smell of spice and are colorful silk clothing. So all this stuff that I've like going to somehow manage to mold into a world, but it's going to start very, very small and it's going to be just a small town, an area around a few points of interest and I'm going to let my players hex crawl to it. I don't have players yet. I don't have, I don't know if I'm going to run this in person or if I'm going to run it in, online, but I'm going to start making it because for me, part of the fun is creating that world. Um, but I'm not going to fall into the trap of thinking I have to create everything for the world and it's all going to be right. I'm going to create a bit of it and just keep building as play goes on. Uh, another thing I'm looking forward to trying out is possibly an open table, which will be interesting, having a pool of players, and each session they go, that party goes back to their safe house, and then maybe the next session is completely different players playing in the same place, but Maybe the map of the dungeon that they didn't get completed gets passed on to them and they go start at another level, stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to trying something out like that. And uh, I'll keep you posted on how it goes. <clears throat> so for now, that is it. That's basically my video on why I'm going low fantasy and I'm leaving all the high fantasy, super powered, crazy monsters behind. And I'm going to try something different because honestly, I got burned out on running those old, those games, those games where I have to find out where every race fits into my world because someone wants to pay, play a Kenku monk and how, how do Kenkus fit into my world? I never thought about that. And there's 15, 20 different races for, that people are choosing from and they're creating all these crazy ideas, which is great. It's fun. And for people who love that game, that's amazing. But for me, I was getting burned out on it and I was burned out, getting burned out on the, that style of play where I had to create a story and make sure the players are going along with the story. And if they veer off, well, I got to change the direction of the story because they expect there to be an overarching story, but I don't want want them to feel railroaded. And so I'm going open world, sort of sandbox, let them go where they want. Their actions are going to mold the world around them. And there might be an overarching storyline that is playing out throughout their adventures, but it's not going to be like, well, you guys got to follow this storyline because this is what I have laid out. At any rate, I hope this was interesting. I hope maybe it gave you some ideas. Maybe gave you uh, a game to go check out. 
and look at the rules and maybe steal some things for your own your own game. And until then, uh, keep your table open for me. Bye.